Today we'll be looking at uh, how we measure the voltage of a coin cell. Uh, now, one way is to obviously just measure the voltage uh, across the two poles with your multimeter and to see if it's at least 3 volts. Uh, in this case, the uh, very ubiquitous uh, CR2032. It's a 3 volt coin cell and this specific uh, battery should measure 3 volts or slightly above 3 volts uh, when it's when it's full but uh, sometimes you can have coin cells like this one that actually are flat uh, and uh, still they uh, measure close to 3 volts so the correct way to do that is to add a load and we'll be having a quick look at the data sheet just to see what the recommended uh, load resistances are uh, I'll be using my little variable resistance box today to set the various resistances that we require. Okay, let's quickly have a look at the data sheet. So here's the data sheet of the CR2032 coin cell. And the graph that we uh, are interested in is this one here. It is the uh, discharge curve based on load. So here you can see if it, if it has a 4.7 kilo ohm resistive load, they are predicting about, let's say, 300 hours before it reaches or goes below 2.8 volts. Uh, on a 15 kilo ohm load, uh, almost 1,200 hours uh, before it reaches, let's say, 2.6 volts, around about. Okay, so uh, let's say on, let's say we use a 4.7 kilo ohm load, we should be seeing a voltage of around about 2.9, not lower than 2.8 volt for uh, for a new cell. Uh, even you know after a 300 hour period, we shouldn't be seeing lower than 2.8 volts on on that specific cell. So if we're getting anything lower than that, then we can assume that the cell has been depleted. All right. So one may way to measure the uh, voltage or to, to check if the uh, cells are still fine is to just simply uh, measure the voltage across them. This pole here is the negative one, and the large pole is the positive. So if we just measure it like that. You can see this one is 2.92 volts and over here we've got 3.13 volts so a little bit over 3 volts so both of these uh, coin cells appear to be fine but are they okay i've got the uh, variable resistance box set to 4.7 kilo ohms uh, so let's measure these uh, two cells again this time with a 4.7 kilo ohm load Okay, so this cell is measuring 3.1 volts, and this one is measuring 2.5 volts. Okay, so this cell is definitely depleted, and uh, uh, so we can actually discard this cell. It's definitely no longer a viable cell. Okay, there's one other way to also characterize these cells, and that's what's called uh, doing a pulse load on it. And our pulse load is where they uh, add a, a fairly heavy load to this specific cell and pulse it for a specific time and then have a look at the uh, characteristic discharge curve. Let's go back to the data sheet and have a look. Okay, so here's a graph of, or a typical graph of the uh, pulse characteristics for the uh, CR2032. And uh, what you can see what they do is uh, they add a load of uh, 100 ohms at a specific temperature and then they uh, pulse this load over the uh, two uh, terminals of the battery for a period of two seconds and then you get this characteristic discharge curve and uh, also the release curve so you, you're having a look at uh, the voltage how far down the voltage goes and you're also having a look at how quickly it recovers uh, back to the original voltage okay I've quickly put together these this little test setup it's basically just a coin cell We've got the uh, two terminals over there, it's hooked up to a little button, and over here we've got a 100 ohm uh, resistor. So the idea is that we will uh, pulse this for about two seconds, or rather depress this button for two seconds, which will short out this coin cell over the uh, using the 100 ohm resistor, and then we can have a look at the output of that uh, of that pulse. Okay, so I've got the scope set up <coughs> for. Uh, uh, half a volt per division. Uh, I've got channel one set right down here. So you, this is a one, two, three volts. Uh, I've got the trigger level. It's at the trigger level at about 2.9 volts, and um, I'm on 250 milliseconds per division. So from the trigger point to about there should be two seconds. Um, 
and uh, yeah let's uh, let's trigger it and see now this is not going to be very scientific so uh, I'm just going to trigger it by hand all right that's close enough so you can see there's the trigger point so we've got one two seconds uh, over there and you can see the, the dis discharge curve on this specific cell is uh, is fairly flat so here's where the 100 ohm load kicks in fairly flat till there and it recovers almost immediately okay so let's have a look at the other cell right so you can see this cell falls uh, quite far below uh, the other cells of voltage so what, what do we have here uh, that's one so that's two volts so it's about 1.5 1.6 volts it falls down to 1.6 volts carries on for the two second period recovers but you'll see it doesn't recover all the way back to three volts it recovers to about mm, what's this two 2.5 six 2.7 volt and slowly creeping back up uh, so uh, the cell is definitely uh, depleted and needs replacing Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I think of the three methods, um, I think just using a simple resistor is the, probably the best way to uh, add a simple resistive load of about 4.7 kilo ohms. Measure the battery, see if it stays above 2.8 volts and you should be fine. If you enjoyed this video and if you would like to see more of this type of videos, please give this one a thumbs up and I'll continue making them.